I'm calling this meeting to order. Here we go. Well, first of all, welcome scholarship winners. And I didn't know if any of the teachers or parents would attend, but they're welcome also. And I wanna welcome the scholarship committee and their members and the SOG members. There are 28 or 29 of us here so far. First of all, I wanna acknowledge and thank the scholarship committee members and its chairperson for the amazing job they did. There were times of anguish, right, Donna? <laughs> Wondering how they were gonna connect with the students and the teachers who know the students because of an abnormal school year with online classes and many unknowns. I saw them wringing their hands for a little while. But Donna Lamb, the scholarship chair, led her committee really well. Let me introduce the committee members. We have Helen Jeanette and Bob Jeanette, Sue Rumsey, Tracy Lynn Ross, Dick Butler, and Marty Plevel. I wanna thank you all for your perseverance. I also need to give a shout out and a thank you to the AV team who put this wonderful video together that we're gonna watch led by Sue Ritz. She can't be with us this evening, but I wanted to acknowledge the work that they put together. I believe when you watch this presentation, um, Donna introducing the seven student awardees, you're gonna to be touched to see such talent from these young articulate adults who are just beginning their career paths with education, you're gonna be impressed. It, uh, it brought a tear to my eye as I watched them. Um, under normal circumstances, we would have our business meeting first, but this is such an important part of SOG's mission, awarding scholarships, that I wanted to do this first and have a presentation. And um, afterwards, I'll do our business point, uh, part of an announcing the incoming board and the state of the guild message. And I think we have a guest here who was a previous award um, recipient, Mr. Poor. I'd like to have him say a few words. So we'll do that afterwards. So if you'll bear with me, I will start the video. Hello, and welcome to SOG's 2021 scholarship program. My name is Donna Lamb, and I'm chairman of the SOG Scholarship Committee. My committee and I are very proud to share with you the seven scholarship winners that we've selected this year. But first, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank my fellow committee members who have worked so tirelessly this year. They are Bob and Helen Jeanette, Marty Plevel, Tracy Lynn Ross, Dick Butler, and Sue Rumsey. Many thanks to all of you. So why do we need SOG scholarships? Primarily because it is our mission to do so, to educate and promote art in the community. And because we do all of that, all of our donations to SOG are tax deductible. But there's an equally important reason, and that is to promote art students, to recognize their talent and encourage them to continue their study of art so that art becomes an integral part of their life experience and of their communities in the future. We have a perfect example of that this year. It is my pleasure to recognize Joseph Poor, the visual art teacher from Sarbita High School, who wrote a letter of recommendation for one of this year's scholarship winners. Mr. Poor was the recipient of a 2006 SOG scholarship. Isn't it gratifying? to know that we supported Mr. Poor in his pursuit of an art education, and now he is sharing his knowledge of art with his high school students. Before we recognize our winners, I would like to take the opportunity to wish two of them a very happy birthday today. Florence Van Groot and Kelly Nguyen. May the coming year be the best ever for both of you. 
And now, please join me in welcoming the 2021 SOG Scholarship winners. Hi, my name is Amy Lostino, and I'm currently a senior at Sawarita High School. I plan on studying art and visual cultural education at the University of Arizona. And with that, I plan on becoming an art teacher when I grow up. I specifically want to teach high school, and I want to become a teacher because of all of the high school teachers I've had and middle school teachers that have really helped and inspired me to be the person I am today. And they are so talented and very encouraging. I believe that this piece best represents me and my art style because of the butterfly that's in this piece. To me, butterflies represent self-growth and self-love, which has been a really big struggle for me during this pandemic, but this piece has really helped me. And this piece also has lots of shading and values, which is a really big part of my art style. And most of my artwork has it. And this piece also has helped me to fall in love with art again during the pandemic. And I just want to say a really big thank you to the Southern Arizona Watercolor Guild for this amazing opportunity. Hello, my name is Florence and I'm a Master's of Fine Arts student at the University of Arizona in Illustration and Design. I'm originally from Germany, but I've lived in the United States with my husband for the past 10 years. My other passion, other than art, is being an educator, which is what I did before going back to university. So after graduating, um, I'd like to go back to teaching art in one form or another, as well as establishing myself as a freelance uh, illustrator. In my work, I like to explore the mental worlds and daydreams that we create for ourselves as places for escape. For me, these are connected with memory and subjective personal symbolism, as well as the need for calm and serenity. And nature serves as a space for contemplation and letting go of daily concerns. So this is why imagery such as flowers and animals often feature in my work. I'd like to give my heartfelt thanks to the Southern Arizona Watercolor Guild for choosing me. And I am so honored to be a recipient of the Hollander Scholarship Award. Thank you. Hi, my name is Emily Cray, and I'm currently an MFA student at the University of Tucson, Arizona, within their 2D painting and drawing area. Currently, or after my graduation, I aim to teach at the collegiate level and also balance my time um, with researching through art making. Currently, my research is leading me to discover things about memory, how we remember, and perhaps how we forget. Um, the still life that I have here represent um, personally nostalgic objects or perhaps generationally nostalgic objects I'm interested in ideas of kitsch and also objects that can perhaps serve as triggers of memory and uh, representing them in a highly realistic or trompe l'oeil fashion can um, help push that to the forefront um, where objects can serve to trigger memories and get us close to the truth value or the truthful essence of the original moment that memory references. I'd like to thank the Southern Arizona Watercolor Guild for this scholarship and helping fund my research endeavors. Hello, my name is Toby Wilson and I am a senior at Push Ridge Christian Academy here in Tucson. Uh, this next fall, I will be majoring in graphic design uh, at John Brown University. Uh, after college, I hope to become a graphic artist. Uh, the piece that I sent to SOG this year was called The Majestic African Elephant. In this piece, uh, I painted an elephant uh, in front of a huge mountain in the background. Uh, and my inspiration behind this piece was because I used to live in Africa. Uh, I lived in Africa uh, for all my life, actually. I was born there. Um, and I lived in Zambia where I was able to see and experience a lot of African wildlife. Um, and many, many elephants. 
Um, so that's the inspiration behind my artwork for this year's SOG application. Uh, I would like to thank SOG so much uh, for this opportunity and this scholarship. Thank you. Bye. Hi, my name is Kaya Lewis and I'm a senior at Empire High School. I'm currently in the AP Art and Design Studio Drawing class and I will hopefully be continuing that sort of art after high school. I'm going to be going for my major in illustration so that one day I can become potentially a freelance illustrator or maybe work in comic books. I haven't quite decided, but I do know that I want to continue pursuing art. The piece that I selected I think best encapsulates my artistic skill um, because it's the most technical piece that I've really done and I think that the use of colors that I did was very nice and it really shows my love of cool colors because they're some of my favorites to work with, especially contrasted with slight warm colors, as well as the eyes that I think I put a big emphasis on in that piece as they are one of my favorite things to draw. A big thank you to the Southern Arizona Watercolor Guild for this opportunity. Thank you. My name is Veronique Pomerhill. I'm a senior at Sarita High School, and I will be going on to study art education in college to become an art teacher. Uh, I have here with me the piece that most represents myself and the rest of my pieces. Um, it's called Cassiopeia, and it depicts a woman standing and holding her child while the planets are orbiting around them. I chose this piece because it utilizes some of my favorite mediums, which are oil pastel and prismacolor. And I think this piece is really representative of my work just because of all the love and the safety and peace that you can feel from looking at it. I also use this piece to submit to the Watercolor Guild for the scholarship. And I just wanna go ahead and thank them for all that they do. I'm so incredibly grateful to them. And with that, I'll go ahead and sign off. Love you guys. I'm Kelly Wing. I'm currently a senior at Desiree High School. I am planning to attend Piedmont Community College for my first two years and then transferring to Arizona State University. I plan on majoring in architecture and possibly minoring business. I am pursuing to becoming architecture or uh, a career path involving graphic design. My first piece, A Cup of Thud, I wanted to represent how our childhood desires are being left behind as we're growing up. A precious holiday like New Year's, also known as Thud, starts to become more valuable and more precious as we take into consideration our elderly and our loved ones growing up with us. And in my second piece, it was made to have a focus around the current issue of Asian hate taking place around the world. I was taught that people find peace when they are surrounded by nature. That's why I want to incorporate things such as flowers, trees, and leaves uh, in hopes that one day the victims and their families are able to find peace within themselves. And lastly, I want to say thank you to the Southern Arizona Watercolor Guild for selecting me to receive one of your scholarships. Thank you. Wasn't that amazing? I, um, I was so touched and to see the diversity of the students um, on behalf of SOG as their president, uh, we wish you much success in all your endeavors. Let's give these students a huge round of applause. Um, Mr. Or I would love if you would give us a few words because you were a recipient back in 2006. Will you unmute and talk to us a moment? Sure. So, hi everyone. I'm Joe Poor. Um, I'm the art teacher down at Saudita High School. Um, this year, two of my students, one was my former student, won scholarships. Um, and I mentioned in my letter that I had actually won a scholarship um, from um, this organization when I was in high school back in uh, 2006. Um, so 
At that time, it was called uh, the Shirley Hamilton Memorial Scholarship, and it was like the big prize. And so um, it was kind of unexpected when I won it. I didn't really see it coming, but um, it was really fortunate because it really um, gave me a boost of confidence uh, uh, in order to sort of really pursue um, art as a, a viable option um, as a career and so um, in high school I was a little bit lost like a lot of my students are and um, winning that scholarship and, and having an art teacher that really believed in me made a really big difference. I, um, uh, Jill Minot was my teacher. I, I'm sure many of you know her. Uh, I know she's still teaching at Ironwood Ridge. Um, and I don't, I, I want to say the, the scholarship was um, it was like a couple grand and it helped pay for my first semester of college and really just kind of re re reinforced my path um, in life. And I ended up going to the U of A, graduated in 2010 um, with an art in, uh, with the art degree in visual communications. I was an illustration student at the U of A and I ended up doing um, some various um, Freelance stuff, I did um, signs. I used to do signs for restaurants. Like I worked for Fox restaurants doing chalkboard displays and window displays. And I did some freelance stuff. I uh, showed my work at Haunted Hands Gallery. Um, also showed my work at Cafe Luce. And what ended up happening was that um, bartending was my main source of income <laughs> and was my entire lifestyle. And so um, what I ended up doing was that I saw a lot of uh, people I had known in art school who went on into education, and I was uh, seeing the stuff that they were doing and, and just the outpouring of creativity, and I kind of decided that maybe that was a, a path I wanted to go on. So I went back to school, and I got an art and visual culture education certificate, and then I ended up at Sawarita High School, where I work today. Um, started out as just the only art teacher, so I did a blend of sculpture, ceramics, drawing and painting, printmaking as well, and then I now, um, we've grown our program, we've added a second art teacher, Danielle Rutherford, which I'm sure you all uh, may know her as well, she's been teaching in the Ampi District for like a decade, and uh, came and joined us on our staff last year, and so now I've sort of uh, started um, the 3D track separately so sculpture and ceramics is what I mostly teach um, nowadays so um, anyways it was really cool to see a couple of my students win prizes uh, I know Amy took the big prize which was really 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 exciting for us and we were really really proud of her and then I don't know if Danique is on this um, is on right now I don't think she is but she's another one of mine and I was very glad to see them both uh, win so it was really good and so I just always feel a lot of gratitude uh, towards the Southern Arizona Water Watercolor Guild because um, it really just uh, pushed me forward in um, my creative path. And I've kind of stayed on that path ever since. So. Hey, Joe. Well, thank you so much. That, that, it, it's inspiration to hear you. I would challenge you and ask your students to... Um, maybe join the guild so that they can continue relationship with other artists too. It's a great way to grow uh, in another venue. Maybe they're not focused on watercolor, but we do other things too. So mm -hmm. keep that in mind. So um, I was intrigued by one of the students in a, in a strange way. And I'd like to ask a question and I'll open it up for a few questions before we start the business meeting part of it. But Emily, are you still with us? If you could unmute yourself. Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Um, my husband and I do studies with the University of Arizona in their um, memory department. Have you collaborated with the memory department with your art, um, the trigger of those uh, items that you've painted? Um. I haven't really looked into any other departments at the university. Are you, is it something in the psychology or? Yes, the psychology department. They're doing lots of studies and we're volunteers and we go down and take all kinds of tests 
and um, memory issues. As a matter of fact, my husband is doing one where they do magnetic resonance something into the back of his brain to see if they can improve his memory. He's in a uh, like a 14 week program and he goes down for a week, one day a week. I mean, every day for a week and then they wait a month and then they go back and anyway, just this, you, you, you touched on something and I found myself thinking of all the Alzheimer's studies we've done in, and how music and art and things like that can trigger memory. So I was just curious, you might wanna collaborate with the psychology department. Absolutely, thank you for <laughs> turning me on to that. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Uh, does anyone else have questions for our scholarship winners? When I watched the video for the first time, and it was enjoying the art. This time, you know, sometimes you glance at things and just see color. Did you all notice in Florence's painting, there's a monkey sitting on a leaf, but it's sort of subdued. And I wondered, Florence, could you tell us about what the monkey represents? Yeah, um, it's also tied, kind of like Emily, tied to memories, but also daydreams. So monkeys, this is part of the, the personal lexicon of symbolism that uh, a professor was suggesting I do where they're like, well, you have these recurring themes. Why don't you write down what, it's a, what it means to you? So that reminds me of home. It makes no sense because of course there are no monkeys in Germany, but um, <laughs> that's just a personal image that that seems to be other than what you experience day to day, because it seems to be exotic, at least for me, and it, it's tied in there. So you, you're you not supposed to notice it at the beginning. Well, I didn't, it worked. Yeah, it, it, you didn't make him the, the focal point, and, yeah. uh, but watching it again and looking at that piece of art, I was touched by that, so uh, Thank you. interesting. Other questions? We have an opportunity, we don't get to talk to, these young students very often, so. <laughs> okay, um, I have a lot to share with you today and I welcome our guests to stay, but I know that they, they might not wanna stay for the business meeting, but it's not a real business meeting. Ooh, but this is a good time if you wanna dash out because I'm gonna give the State of the Guild message by Joe. And, um, Thank you. and announced our new board of directors. Thank you for joining us. It was a pleasure. We're very happy for you all. Oh, where to start? You know, I'm finishing my first year and I want to thank, I'm gonna say my, because sort of my team, my friends, my new friends, but I can't just say the current board of directors, but I wanna thank my current board of directors and what I call the core team for hanging in there with me this year. The most unusual year we could have imagined, right? I asked them to work through the summer so we could find ways to stay solvent. I asked them to edit the policies and procedures document so that it reflects the Guild today with our new software system and a new way of doing business. And they helped me understand the history of the organization so I could be effective. You know who you are. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. And if we were in person, I'd ask you all to stand and we'd have a huge round of applause. You guys are amazing volunteers. So the other group of people I need to thank right now is the nominating committee, Karen Brungart, Pat Inman, and Sue Rumsey. She only stayed on for a little while, but they're on the nominating committee and it's not an easy job because it's mostly rejection. <laughs> um, but they persevered and uh, went on. So now I have the pleasure of introducing our new board of directors. 88 of you voted for them, a little less than last year. 
Uh, so I'm going to stay on as your president. Um, Tad Lamb is going to be your vice president of shows. And although this person wasn't voted in, he has an assistant, Kathy McLean, to help him. So that's a big job, as Marty White will attest. Sue Emer will be our new treasurer. And she's been our bookkeeper, so she knows all our money. Karen Brungart couldn't find a secretary, so she stepped up to be secretary until we could, until she can recruit somebody in person, maybe. So maybe in September, if we can meet, she's going to try and um, wrangle someone. We have three members at large now, based on our, our change to our bylaws. Sandra Montgomery, PJ Kathy, and Paula Weech. So I'm just delighted. We'll have a, a full slate to help us make decisions. Okay, our state of the guild. What do you think? Are we good? <laughs> You bet. Be, you bet. First of all, according to our policies and procedures uh, manual, the president is required to give a state of the guild message in this final month of our fiscal year. Bottom line, we're really healthy, thanks to the hard work and creative ideas of some of our members. Last year, on May the 31st, 2020, after we closed the gallery in March, our net revenue line showed us having $4,500. Now that's, that's not the balance of all of our accounts, but that means we're operating the blank. It didn't have a minus sign in front of it. Um, and, and mind you, that's um, at a good stage because the membership renewals are coming in. And if we compare that, let me back up. This doesn't reflect the balance in our checking account and our savings account and the other special accounts. We have a Western Fed account. We have a scholarship checking account from which the award winners will get their checks sent to their universities and, and schools. Um, we have the Hollander Scholarship Fund from which um, that money also gets transferred once a year. In comparison, this year, as we approach the end of our fiscal year, with memberships renewal coming in and 20 more, 21 more days to go, we're sitting at $5,487. So we're $1,000 ahead of where we were this time last year. And uh, I, I just am I'm so pleased that we've been able to survive. We are a nonprofit that has survived the pandemic. How did we do this? I need to quantify the efforts it took to make this happen. And note some of this happened before my shift began as president. Number one, we purchased Masterpiece Manager software. It saved our bacon, our butts, everything. It saved everything. The previous board made a very timely decision. They made this decision back in December, I believe. We didn't get it up and running till April or May. Can you imagine what would we have done without our virtual shows? We had no way of showing our art until we purchased Masterpiece Manager. So I thank those who had the forethought to do this. Although we make more money with the gallery opened, we still sold $21,000 worth of artwork. And that's maybe 9,000 less than the previous year. Because when people come in and they browse, the bin work, believe it or not, really adds up and makes a difference. Number two, making the decision to close the gallery in March after our Fiesta Sonoran reception was daunting. We all thought, well, we'll wait a couple of months and see how it goes. However, Having it closed had some benefits in that it gave us time to evaluate our expenses. Over the year, we've saved money, 
by not having, not having, by, wait a minute, by having lower heating and air conditioning costs, no house cleaning fees, no paper goods, no reception expenses. Plus, it gave us a chance to reevaluate our phone service. We dropped one phone line and then we upgraded our bandwidth so that our gallery classes would come across really well. So that balanced itself out, but we had time to do all this. In June last year, we explored how we used our storage space. I kept getting a bill for over $200 a month for space. After a thorough inventory by Judy Constantine, say hi, Judy, <laughs> and myself, we cleaned house, we gave away bins, we sold a shelving unit, and were able to consolidate things to fit into a smaller and less expensive storage unit, saving us more than 50% a month of what we were paying. While we were doing that, we looked at all our historical materials and rearranged things. We brought things in from the storage area and our new um, historian, Sue Mahan. We went through everything, she inventoried it. And let me tell you, there's some fun stuff in there. We have handwritten membership directories from way back in the 70s. And um, you gotta remember, we're, we're over 53 years old now. There are historians and archivists that are really impressed of what we've preserved. And um, with the donation of one of the large filing cabinets in the gallery, we um, decided what we'd keep in the climate controlled storage area and what we needed to keep in our gallery. So if you're ever curious, let me know. I'd be glad to show you that old stuff. We have magazine articles, newspaper articles, it was just really fun going through all that history. Number four, when you worry about the revenue, and I was very worried, the first thing you have to do is look at your expenses. Um, we eliminated some, as I mentioned, and now we have different kinds of expenses. We had have a monthly, we bought a subscription to Zoom for our meetings and our gallery classes and our premier workshops. We have a monthly payment for software support that we didn't have before with our new masterpiece manager system. We have a new genius credit card machine for the gallery, which is actually less expensive than the old system was. So like I said, there are some pluses and minuses. We interviewed um, three new CPAs and hired one of them, which will make our uh, doing our taxes less expensive next year. We won't see that this year, but we will next year. And uh, he's now on board with us. And here's what we did to make revenue and preserve our reserve funds. I didn't want to have to dip into reserves if there was any way possible. This is what made us work all summer long. I challenged the workshop committee to figure out how we could continue our premier workshops with them not coming here. Having learned Zoom, um, having learned the Zoom technique, Workshop chair Jenny Clark worked out with the instructors and modified all the contracts so we could do these things virtually. Then our amazing AV team taught our first instructor how he could te uh, teach us. That was sort of fun. We had several sessions via Zoom <laughs> teaching uh, Don Andrews how to teach us from afar, from Texas. You know the rest. It was a huge success. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, I, I jumped, I missed my spot, my cue. The other instructors were already catching up with uh, Zoom. And so because of that, we were able to still make revenue in workshops. We made $6,000 this year versus 9,500 that we made last year. Um, but we didn't have the expenses of housing the instructors or paying rent to the church. And we all learned a lot doing this. And a lot of people really loved the two 
two-day sessions versus a four-day session. Uh, four-day session via Zoom is quite intense. Then our past president, Karen Vampatik, had the idea of asking a few SOG members who have experience teaching if they'd be willing to teach gallery classes via Zoom. You know the rest. We outfitted the Helen and Jeanette gallery room with, as a recording studio. Um, it was huge success. It was so good those six with those seven instructors we did that we did it again and even offered replays. It was ingenious. These were advertised all over the country to all the watercolor societies um, throughout the US. So we often had five, six, seven um, non-members from various watercolor societies taking our classes from our members who were teaching. That's pretty cool. And this idea is the thing that really kept us afloat and uh, gave us the revenue to keep us stable. One of the interesting, now this is the third one. One of the interesting findings of revenue was show profits. You know, we have shows, you guys pay fees to, to get in the shows and then we have awards and we give out a lot of money and we've got to pay for reception. We got to do all these things. We made $3,000 more this year with our virtual shows than we did with live shows last year. And that includes canceling the holiday show, which is our largest moneymaker. Go figure. I think you guys liked entering these shows because you didn't have to frame your work. <laughs> anyway, I thought that was a, um, that was a, a interesting oddity. Okay. <sighs> Number four here. The fundraising committee kicked into high gear with Jim Click ticket sales. We made, last year you guys bought $1,300 worth of tickets. And this year, more than double, you purchased $2,700 worth of Jim Click tickets. And that just goes straight to the bottom line into the scholarship fund. That, that's just amazing. Maybe it was the ease of purchasing them on the new website page we created that made a difference. It was really easy to go click, oh, $100, yep. And, uh, Bev would send you your five tickets. Then the committee and, and a team of others, I call them the sidewalk sale committee, we kicked off the sidewalk sale. I think 27 cars pulled up and delivered stuff on the, that Saturday that was collection day. And one was so full, he said, I have more stuff, should I bring that? And I, I uh, asked the guy, and this was from the Ann Beddington estate. And he said, Ann had died and willed all her supplies to SOG. And I went to Oracle the next, uh, in the middle of the next week and picked up all the rest of her stuff because I didn't, the fact that he drove all the way from Oracle to downtown Tucson to bring this stuff. And then he filled up the back of my car. Well, we made $2,900 on all the stuff that you guys donated. And we donated the remaining items um, to a place for teachers where they can go buy art supplies at a really discounted place. Judy Constantine knew of this place. So uh, all that extra stuff went there. And some of the stuff we preserved for Framers Corner, there were some good maps and um, phone core and things like that. So I thank you all for your donations. Next, we have members who donated large portions of their incentive checks from the garden, from the government. You know, we got manna from heaven. And so they write us checks just because. 
And we have some very generous donation donors who step up every year to help. We have volunteers who don't charge the guild for the stamps, paper, ink, and supplies they use to do their jobs. And I love the ones who had $25 or $50 when they renew their membership. What a love of the organization to do that. I thank you all. You've made us all be successful and survive. You've kept us strong and solvent. Then there's, how do you measure donating special equipment so that the gallery classes recording were just superb? So here we are, 14 months after closing the gallery, and we're now able to see the light of opening our gallery on July the 1st. I felt it was important to share many of these behind the scene activities because it shows how important, how many volunteers it takes to run this organization. When we reopen, we still need some more. Call and talk to me, maybe you can help. The reason I say that, there are jobs that you probably don't even know exist. There's smaller jobs, some that you can do from home, and we need your help. We've had a core team that has worked hard this year, but now that we're uh, sort of turned loose, we need you to let loose too, so please do that for SOG. So I look forward to another year of leading SOG. I figured the first year was hard. <laughs> You're learning so much stuff, you don't know. I mean, I didn't know we had a liquor license. I didn't know we had to file this corporate commission thing. I didn't know about a lot of stuff, but I learned a lot. I figured the second year would be easy. And then I realized, golly, I've never run a meeting in person. I've never had introduced people for reception in the gallery. A couple of jobs I've never done before because we haven't been live. So it will be new and different, but there'll be a comfort level of, I think I know what I'm doing this time. <laughs> but I still like Zoom board meetings. Saves me a drive to Saddle, from Saddlebrook. Okay, I'm gonna uh, open this up. If you have suggestions of how we could do things better, I always welcome new ideas. That's how we came up with the virtual gallery classes. These are new ideas. It's how we survived. Um, before the meeting started, I had shared with a few people. I'm collaborating with uh, another member of writing an article for the papers. And the title of it is, this nonprofit survived the pandemic. So watch for that. I thank you for coming to the May general meeting. I, um, I, uh, I'm sort of sad that, you know, we're gonna miss each other through the summer in some ways. Our next meeting isn't until September. So I wish you all an amazing summer. I hope you get to visit family, travel, do things. I had a little mini vacation, went up to Scottsdale for four days. But come July 1st, I hope to see some of you in the gallery live, either as docents or bringing your art to hang in the gallery. And um, anyway, it's been an amazing year and I thank you for your support. I guess now I ought to ask if there are any questions. You have to unmute yourself if you have questions. Did I surprise you with anything? Yes, this is Bob Jeanette. Hello? Yeah, hi, Bob. Okay, will there be a reception? No, virtual, just virtual. We decided that it was still too risky in the summer to have 
uh, uh, real receptions. We don't need that many people in the gallery yet, but perhaps by September, the fall. That's a good question. Is there gonna be two shows this summer? Yes, we're having one, put a bird in it. Tad's got some clever, clever ideas. I hope you're getting the emails about this. Um, and it's in the sketchbook. Uh, it, it doesn't mean you have to have a bird in your painting, but I love the story. He said, you know, if your name is Robin, you can put it in the show. <laughs> if you're not happy, do a self-portrait and call it grouse. You get the idea. Uh, let the idea soar and spread your wings. <laughs> Tad's got some great clever ideas. I can hardly wait. And the second show, which will um, be August to September, is one called Unsinkable Spirits. And it will be, you'll be able to submit any painting that was rejected in a show. Whether it's a SOG show, Western Fed, a national show, you didn't get in for some reason that you get to, and there's no time limit on it. So that'll be a fun summer show because, you know, one judge or juror might say, nah, that didn't cut it, but you get into another show. But anyway, this is your opportunity to show stuff that maybe hasn't seen the light of day didn't make it into the, the gallery or on the website. More questions? Wow, you guys are easy to please. We had 37 people at the, at the meeting today and uh, I think you could tell I was very enthusiastic about all the news. It was sort of fun going back and gathering all this information. And, and I have to thank Sue Emer for providing me. <gasps> Jenny, there's Jenny. Hi, Jenny. <laughs> we miss you already. I wanted to say hello at the end. Um, uh -huh. I'm, I came in late, but um, wonderful to hear all that positive news about the gallery. Yeah, yeah, we've got and a about bright song. future. I mean, it's marvelous. Yeah. yeah. We want you to stay with us. <laughs> oh, well, I'm here in thought. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> I just want to say thanks to, to you, Kay, and all of your board for last year. I mean, that was, uh, that's quite a feat to keep us solvent and keep us viable until our opening on Feb uh, in July. Thanks so much to you and your board. You're welcome. We had a good time doing it. I think it sort of bonded us in a, in a way that <laughs> you wouldn't have thought about, but uh, it wasn't um, same old, same old for sure. Thank you for your kind words. All right, well, I did that in less than an hour. Holy cow. Uh, well, again, I hope everybody has a wonderful summer and uh, enter the shows and we'll, um, we've got a plan for safely allowing people to bring their paintings. Everybody will do it. Um, we'll have a check-in table. That sounds like an oxymoron outside and runners will uh, bring your paintings in. So nobody's coming into the gallery. Uh, we won't be collecting money for a reception because we're going to do a virtual reception. Everybody seems to love uh, hearing the judge speak why they chose a painting. And the best part, which we never did in the live thing, was having uh, the artists speak about what, what inspired them on that painting. And I've enjoyed that as, as much because when they're a gallery, you can't hear well. And everybody's rushed and crowded and we're moving from one painting to the next. So there's some benefits to what we've learned. Yeah. Well, if we don't have any other comments or questions, I will uh, bring this meeting to a close. It has been recorded. Um, I'll have our AV staff put it up on the website. And I thank you all from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Thank you, Kay. You're welcome. You're welcome. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Cheers. Oh. <laughs>
<laughs> Cheers, yes. Okay, end recording.